the fair, I'm sorry, the volume imbalance. This candle here, we opened, we rallied up again. So we crossed over this volume imbalance two other times, but there's no body laid across it. So as long as there's no body laid across it, this will always act like a magnet. Okay, so there's a little secret for you for my volume imbalance concept. So I'm watching that. Do we go up here to lay down a body across this range? And let me show you what I mean by that. You look at this area here for me to be satisfied with this volume and balance I want to see it lay the, uh, the the body of a candle across it and close it now it, I don't care where it closes but it needs to lay a body completely over top of the high and the low that makes that volume and balance see how we wicked right up into it here and then the reaction off of that it's sensitive to it but I want to see it lay a body across that range, that little orange shaded area. And once it does that and then it leaves it, then I'm satisfied and I'm probably not going to refer back to that volume of balance anymore. But as long as they don't drop a body across that range, it'll always find a way to like, go back and test it again multiple times. So that's why I teach that out of all my PD arrays and that are influential to me in my analysis, uh, the volume imbalance is the most flexible one, and it, it's frustrating for a new student to learn that because they don't know what to do with it. It's a point where I expect price to come back to, and it can come back to it multiple times. When I'm done with it is when it lays a body across it, and then we move away from it. Then I will no longer keep it on my chart. But as long as it stays open and there has been no body laid across it, it doesn't need to have both directions. Okay, it's not, it's not like a, a rebalancing necessity there. It's just once it lays a body across it and creates another candle, like see, it has yet to lay a